course is set. The end goal, the lake. Sunset is the starting gun for the tough mudder of amphibians, toads. The terrain is a man-made obstacle course. Concrete monoliths need to be navigated. Stone steps must be climbed. But these toads are being driven by the most basic of instincts, the need to breed. Winter has been spent in these woodlands, but with temperatures on the rise and dampness in the air, it's the toad's cue to commence. For this competitor, a human hurdle stands in her way. She doesn't compete in the high jump, but free climbing is a skill she has mastered. She grasped the textured surface with her four-toed front feet, pulling herself up. Some obstacles are not so easy to navigate. Her journey is fraught with danger. This time, it's a road that crosses her route. And cars can be lethal. Toads prefer to walk rather than hop, so getting out of the way of an approaching vehicle isn't easy. Toad numbers have declined by 68% so every casualty counts. Thankfully here, there are helping hands to even out the odds. The Shalcombe Toad Rescue Group. I'm here to walk up and down the road with my torch to look for toads and help them over the road. Here we are, I've got one. I think it's a girl. People generally think, oh, they're slimy, they're horrible. They're adorable and I've always loved them ever since I was a kid. There we are. I think they're just such a beautiful animal. At this site, we've got maybe 50 volunteers, and some of them are coming out nearly every night. The things with toads is they prefer to go back to the same pond each year, so they go back to their breeding pond. Maybe for hundreds of years, they've been migrating that route. But if we stick a road in the way, suddenly there's cars going across, and so we do get a lot of squashed toads on the roads. We're over 700 so far this year that have actually been physically picked up and moved across just at this particular site. And it makes a massive difference. So you're just going to continue on your journey a little while. Here we are. When you've helped a little toad across the road, it just feels really lovely because you just feel like you're hopefully helping it on the way to go to breed and then to help the next lot of toads to be born. The finish line is in sight. She's on the home stretch. But she's been spotted by a smaller male waiting on the sideline. For him, this isn't a spectator sport. He gives chase. It's a warm embrace for the female. He has a game plan. If he can be with her as she enters the water, he'll be the first to pass on his genes. But for her, it's an extra load to bear. Using the last of her reserves, she crosses the finish line. At last, she can release her spawn. And for the male, fertilization is the prize. The trophy, string-like structures with the next generation of tough mudders developing inside. Look at all this spawn! Oh no! It's spawn nice. central over here! There's quite a lot more toad spawn than there was before. So I've seen lots more spawn than I've seen for years actually, so really heartening to see such a lot. They like to sort of swirl it around the vegetation. Yeah, they like to kind of hang mm, it around it, hang don't it. They? Yeah, they do. It feels like all these weeks of going out in the dark and the rain and the cold and not being able to go out with your friends or go out for dinner or anything like that, it's worth it. This is the result and it's worth every night of that. 
So this time next year. This time next year, I'll see you down a dark lane soon. Absolutely. I love that toad enthusiasm and that community, uh, that community getting together. You know, those volunteers looking after those toads. Great way of getting engaged and good practical local conservation in action. Top work. But the toad is one of those animals that lives pretty much all over the UK, not the Isle of Man, Northern Ireland, but the mainland of the UK. And it's a creature that we think we know well. Um, I've got a question for you. Go on then. How old do you think the oldest common toad lived for? Uh, I, oh, I say 20 years. No. There was a toad in Hull called Georgie. It was yeah. taken to a garden in 1973 and lived there until it was at least 38 years old. And it was already an adult, so they can live to 40 years or more. Really? I know, it's amazing, isn't didn't it? didn't realise that. Absolutely amazing. But there's <laughs> always new things to learn about species that live around us. And now we've got some cracking new science about toads. And this new science was actually found by chance by researchers that were doing surveys on bats and dormice. Now just think about that. Where would you look for bats and dormice? Where do you do your surveys? You do them up trees. Now toads, ground-dwelling creatures. So how did they discover anything about them? Well, just take a look at what they saw. While they were doing their surveys, they saw a toad up a tree in a crevice. Not only that, when the dormice researchers were looking for their dormice, they found a toad in a dormouse nest box. And what I love about this information is it's collaborative. Lots of people working together that shared that info. And there's loads of people. The National Dormouse Monitoring Project, the Battery Habitat Key Project, researchers from Cambridge University, Frog Life, People's Trust for Endangered Species, all working together. And that's what they saw. New science. Toads up trees. Toads up trees. And we got this photograph. This was sent to us by Silvio Petrovan. He's the lead researcher in the research that we're talking about, based at Cambridge University. Look, here's the tree. The red rectangle de you know, delineates where the hole is. The photograph of a hole there, and there's the toad that was in it. Now, on average, the toads were found 134 centimetres up the tree, but some of them scaled three metres. And there you can see that was a mossy tree, so perhaps they were able to scramble up the moss. And remember, toads are a walking, ground-based amphibian. They don't have any adaptations for tree climbing. So getting up to three metres mm. means that they seriously want to get up there for some reason. And this isn't just a one-off random thing that a couple of researchers saw. If we go over to the map, you can see... 50 records of this and there's probably lots more because let's face it when you're doing any sort of survey of toads you're not looking up trees i bet people will start looking now well, they should look looking now the question is though why we've got to answer this question why would a toad want to go up a tree um McKenna, can you help me by being a bit toady i can because i've actually I know got you can, because you've I've, been toady for about the last i've got a years. toad attached to my back so i will uh, be your toad oh what did you say nothing so forget it. move on swiftly <laughs> okay why would they want to climb the tree hold on before you ascend okay uh, the first thing is that they might be avoiding predators and when you think about the predators they have grass snakes eat lots of frogs and toads toads sort of inflate themselves they blow themselves up to try and discourage the snakes from being able to swallow them polecats and otters have developed techniques for eating toads toads have sort of distasteful toxic skin and otters have learned to be able to split that skin and almost turn the toad inside out so they can eat them so they may want to get off the ground to avoid other ground-based animals particularly those predators if but i'm a toad I, I don't want to be turned inside out so climb I'm the tree ascend the tree what get do you away. find michaela slightly further up Oh, I find some food. You know what? I quite fancy a bit of a slug. <laughs> and I, I think I might have that spider too. Thanks very much. That was okay. a bit opportunistic. Could they be climbing the trees to find food? Well, when there are drought conditions and it's very dry on the ground, perhaps those holes in the trees are pockets of moisture where some of the toad's invertebrate food might be hiding out. But then you would think they might go up there get the food and then get back down again. Why would they actually stay there? Okay, if you climb a little bit okay. higher. Oh, I, th I think I've found somewhere quite, I've, I've I've got quite to say like at this point, here. there's a certain generation of formerly young men, now middle-aged men, that have waited years for this view, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. But anyway, let's move swiftly on. Uh, they could be ascending the tree to avoid parasites. Parasites. 
this parasite in particular. This little fly is a thing called the toad fly. I know it looks like a fly you might find on your cake or buzzing around your lampshade, but it's a particularly hideous parasite. Now we're about to show you a clip which is slightly distasteful. So if you're eating, I suggest you stop. And if you're particularly sensitive, I suggest you turn away momentarily. The fly lays its eggs on the toad. They hatch into maggots and the maggots migrate to the nostrils and the eyes of the toad where they begin to consume its living flesh. And they continue to eat it until the toad is blind. The toad then makes its way into open country where it's further attacked by blowflies until eventually those maggots have eaten all of its head. Here's a photograph of a toad that's been almost completely gutted by these maggots. They then pupate. The pupae drop onto the ground and they emerge a few weeks later to start the whole process over again. And there can be three broods of these toad flies every year. Now what we don't know at the moment is whether the toad flies are looking for their host along the ground and not up the tree. So it could be that the toads are ascending the trees to avoid those hideous parasitic toad flies. That was like a horror movie and my toad has been scared by that so my toad is going in the hole. <laughs> but you know it is absolutely fascinating information and it is new science that was accidentally found. So if you happen to see any amphibians, frogs and toads up trees then Frog Life would love to know about it so please get in contact with them. All the details are on our website. But as I say that, that was what? So what? I was meant to hold the ladder. Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, a bit late now, Sorry. isn't it? It's a little Sorry. bit late now.